What's going on, British Budget Team? Welcome back to another episode of South Stand Signings and South Stand Stories all brought into one. We have got a good old trusty Yerba Mate here and we are ready to delve into all of the evening's news surrounding Leeds United, surrounding our game with Middlesbrough tomorrow and surrounding in coming signings what's going on everybody please let me know how you're feeling down in the comment section down below are you in a good mood are you in good spirits or are you a little down on Leeds's result over the weekend please let me know down in the comment section down below but before we waste any more of your time let's take a big sip of this mm, mm, mm. and let's get straight in to the news and the first story of course there is no better place to start than with tomorrow's game against Middlesbrough and of course Daniel Fox pre-match press conference he of course has been talking about Wednesday's cup trip to Borough <clears throat> and he's come out with a few interesting quotes one I really wanted to depict now while speaking about this with many people, we uh, speculated on whether he would make that many changes. Now, me, myself and I, I didn't think he was going to make too many changes for this Borough game because it is so early on in the season. And I thought, you know, we've got an international break in about three games time. You don't really want to be messing around too much. You want to get as many points on the board as possible and you want to give people as much game time as possible. However... It doesn't seem like that may necessarily be the case. Now, first of all, he came out with a bit of a damning comment saying that it is not realistic that you'll win the Carabao Cup, but you never know. And you also want to sometimes achieve something unrealistic. And he said he's a very big fan of cup competition. Now, obviously, we will go highly motivated to this game because we have made it uh, clear that I'm a big believer in this and we play a pretty good side in Middlesbrough. It will be an interesting clash. However, this is the interesting part that we have to take note. We will also make sure that we won't risk a player. We know that especially during the first week, there's loads and perhaps uh, you know, loads of potential injuries to happen because it is so early on in the season, because people aren't necessarily equipped to be running the miles. I know you have preseason and everything, but nothing can prepare you for what an actual competi competitive league game is like. And that takes a whole load of wear and tear on your body, and sometimes you need to ease yourself into it. So it does look like he is going to be rotating quite a few players, and he even confirms that here. I think sometimes to rotate on two or three positions is quite normal when we have such a busy schedule, and to rotate on more could sometimes stop the rhythm. So that is good. He's not going to change the squad too much, but a couple of key positions, I believe, will change. I personally believe he's going to bring Brendan Aronson into the starting eleven after the impact that we saw him have. I know he missed the sitter at the end, but he still did have a positive impact when he did come onto the pitch. So I do believe we will see him getting a little bit more game time, potentially coming off in the 60, 70th minute and seeing if he can feature out wide potentially or potentially push Jorginho Rutter out wide because, you know, it's going to be hard to displace Rutter out the side. But Arrington definitely does need a little bit more game time because he was quite impressive when he came on. What about you guys? Who do you think will be brought into the side and consequently brought out as well. Please let me know down in the comments section down below. Now, moving on to some transfer news. And Raksaki looks to have snubbed the mighty whites of Leeds United in order to join Sheffield United. Now, the Star were reporting earlier on in the week that Leeds had held talks to sign Raksaki. And it's been reported by a lot of places Obviously, that we made a £15 million bid for him, which Crystal Palace ended up rejecting. And we spoke about this in the last video when we were talking about Raksaki, in that Palace were keen to loan him out, which is why they rejected uh, potential offers from other Premier League sides as well, because they foresaw him playing a key role in the 2025-26 Premier League season for them. Now, in terms of him going on loan to either Leeds or Sheffield United, Leeds uh, were not able to offer him a consistent string of game time and Sheffield United, on the other hand, were. Obviously, we got Dan James, we got Wilfred Nonto, and we're still looking to strengthen in those wide areas. So it is not sure that he would be guaranteed game time over the likes of these kinds of players and it makes perfect sense am i 
disappointed not to be having him in the squad. Yes, I think he could have been a good rotationary player. But is it the end of the world? Not really, because there are a lot of other options for Leeds United to go for. One of them being, of course, Jonathan Rowe, who has been the talk of the town over the past few weeks for Leeds United. And it does look like there may be a little bit of progress starting to happen on the Jonathan Rowe gravy train. Now, if we do delve into the stories, uh, we will see that there has been a huge update over the past 24 to 48 hours over Jonathan Rowe's situation. Now, it has been reported over the past couple of days that Norwich are becoming more and more, how should we say, unadverse, unreluctant, or accepting of the fact that they are going to be losing Jonathan Rowe this summer, and it does seem unfeasible for them to keep them, although stranger things have happened in football. We really have seen it, especially with Wilfred Nonto and Leeds United last season. Uh, obviously, the two clubs that were in top contention were Marseille and Leeds United. Marseille obviously putting in that £10.3 million bid, which was rejected, and apparently they're looking for anywhere between, you know, 13, 14, and hopefully for them, the 15 million pound mark, which, you know, if you believe everything to go off with the Raksaki thing, Leeds are not adverse to spending that much on a winger. Now, why have things been hotting up recently for Leeds United is because Lechip are now reporting that Marseille are ready to withdraw from the race for Jonathan Rowe, having already committed £50 million on transfers this summer. Their most high-profile capture so far is that of Mason Greenwood, and the less we speak about that situation, the better. Um, and it does look like Leeds could be moving. To that end, and after seeing an offer for Roe rejected, Marseille have instead turned their focus to Borussia Dortmund's uh, Yusafa Mukoko, who is poised to sign a loan with a 15 million euro obligation 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 to buy next summer. It also reports that Roberto De Zerbi's side are closing in on a deal for Len striker Eli Wahi for a fee of around 30 million euros. As a result, Marseille are said to be to view the signing of Rowe as too expensive and a deal to bring him to the Stade Velodrome is seen as complex at this stage. Now, obviously, at this stage, things are very subject to change in football. So if Leeds are going to get this deal done, we need to strike while the iron is hot and get him in there very, very quickly, not mess about, because, listen, we've seen it all before, we've seen Leeds dearly dally on players, uh, you know, the, 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 I know, maybe unlikely to happen, and I've spoken about it pretty much every single year, uh, since we didn't sign him, oh my days, uh, he's completely gone out, Rodrigo de Paul, uh, that whole situation where we dilly dally for ages, it didn't happen, the same with Gakpo, the same with a litany of players. Noah Lang comes to mind where we dilly-dally and then end up losing out on the deal. I believe I'm forgetting a f quite a few more with that. And hopefully Leeds do strike while the iron hot is hot on this one. Although I do believe we still need a couple more signings after that. Uh, potentially not just in the wing area as Leeds are scouting for defensive reinforcements. One of them being touted to be Ogbus. And, of course, the Bundesliga club that we have been linked with, our, uh, Freiburg, ha are reluctant to sell him. And it doesn't seem like Leeds are necessarily going to be getting him. Obviously, Leeds are looking for uh, fullback cover, which we saw we were very deficient in last season, having to pay Archie Gray there. And after losing not only Archie Gray, but our other right back, a right back option is very, very, very important for Leeds United. And Leeds United have also been looking at Bashir Humphreys. Um, uh, but again, not a lot of information to go on there. These are just a few rumor mills, uh, rumors in the mill that are circulating. But of course, I will keep you informed if anything does develop in those situations but right now it doesn't look like there is too much bark to bite on however one story that has been doing the rounds recently of course being how should i say inflamed 
by uh, <clears throat> by some comments from a, a couple of pundits, shall we say, is Leeds United going back in for a former star? Now, there isn't too much substance to this story as of yet. I will say that to preface this. However, I do want to get your guys' opinions on whether you think this would be a good deal for Leeds United. And it is, of course, Mr. Jack Clark. Uh, Clinton Morrison has been the front runner for this kind of story obviously saying that uh he doesn't necessarily favor Sunderland to get promoted with Jack Clark being one of their best players having a goal involvement every 2.26 appearances for Sunderland uh which is a very good turnout since leaving Leeds United I know he had a bad patch at Tottenham which means that you know when he moved to Sunderland he wasn't in the best of form so the fact that he's been able to rebuild himself and we all saw how he rebuilt himself when he kind of taught Archie Gray a new one a little bit when we played them last season would that be a deal that you guys are interested in I know you always say never go back to where you left and he did kind of leave us high and dry when we were still in the championship having said that we needed to sell him in order to reinvest in order to allow us also to keep hold of Calvin Phillips so that we could go up and it does kind of seem like uh, the more you look at it, Radrizzani was kind of key in orchestrating that deal to happen is so that he could persuade Calvin Phillips to say and potentially keep Leeds United in the running for promotion next year, which, of course, we did achieve. So is it something you would entertain? I definitely would. I think he would be a good squad player. I wouldn't just want him. I think if you could get Jack Clark and a Jonathan Rowe, potentially, then I think Leeds could be in a very, very healthy position, although the likelihood of signing both of those is very, very low. But anyway, please let me know. Do you guys think that could be a possibility, or do you think we should just go all guns blazing podcast style in for Jonathan Rowe? Please let me know down in the comment section down below what you think about all these stories circulating today, and of course, tomorrow's big game against Borough. Please let me know down in the comment section down below what you think, but for now, guys, I will see you very, very soon. Au revoir! my brothers and my sisters.